One of the sticking points, very critical one, is the union wants to return to a pension plan. And in the U.S., what we've largely seen, pension plans are defined benefit plans, where a company is uh, liable for a certain uh, you know, level of benefits while a person is retired. In the U.S., we've largely moved away from pension plans to 401k plans. So this is a pretty big sticking point. My understanding is this is one of the biggest obstacles between uh, the company right now and, and the union. The, the other issue they brought up uh, during uh, as they went into the strike was they want to build the next airplane up in Renton, Washington. So, so this union is basically based out of uh, Upper Washington State uh, in, the, in the United States uh, around the Puget Sound area. Uh, and they build the majority of the Boeing airplanes. But one one particular airplane, the 787, one of the Boeing's most recent, was moved down to the Carolinas on the U.S. East Coast, where it's built but in a non-union plan. The union wants part of this agreement to build the next Boeing airplane in that Puget Sound area to make sure that the union uh, rank and file have the opportunity to build it. So it's a bit of an aggressive move by management, you feel? So I think the pension plan is a bit of an aggressive move by the union. Uh, I believe that wanting to build the next airplane, not that aggressive for the union. I think that's probably pretty fair. Uh, the wage increases right now, uh, companies agreed to about 30 uh, percent wage increases. They said they pulled that offer back. The union wants 40 percent. What we've seen in the United States recently, 40 percent over four years. What we've seen in the U.S. recently is a 10 percent increase for organized labor isn't out of the norm. We saw a port strike recently settled where the union got 60% over six years. So that doesn't seem particularly aggressive by the union. And has there been any impacts of these strikes on Boeing's operations? Yes, yeah, so significant impacts. So again, the Puget Sound area of Washington where most Boeing airplanes, commercial airplanes are made. The 737 is made in a town called Renton, Washington, in that Puget Sound area. That's the most important airplane for Boeing. So part of Boeing's recovery plan was increasing build rates on that 737, which improves economies of scale, helps them generate cash and profits. They were going to build 38 of them a month by the end of this year. This union builds the majority of that airplane. And so with them out on strike, those build rates aren't rising. It's a real big crush to Boeing cash flow and Boeing profitability. Yeah, George, on the business side of things, uh, Boeing wants to raise $25 billion to shore up its finances through stocks and de debt offerings and credit agreements. How much trouble is Boeing in financially? Yeah, so we just saw Boeing pre-announce earnings. They were supposed to announce them on the 23rd of October. Uh, so this was, I think, part of, the, uh, of a move for Boeing to go into the markets, like you said, and raise another, I don't think it'll be 25 billion. They, they fire, they filed, uh, you know, a report, a report that would allow them to take 25 billion. They'll probably take 10 to 15 billion. Right now, what we saw when they pre-reported, Boeing had about 10 billion dollars of cash on their balance sheet. They've told us previously that's about the limit. The, the minimum of what they need to run the company. So I think this strategy is about Boeing going out and getting at least a couple more quarters of cash so that they can show the union that they're prepared to go the long haul in negotiations. Because right now, it seems like negotiations have broke down a little bit. The union definitely feels like they're in a stronger position. But if Boeing puts another $10 billion of cash you know, on their balance sheet, I think they'd be ready to go the longer haul and tell the union, look, you've really got to rethink your position. We need to come together and, and negotiate and decide how we can get this uh, strike settled and get back to building airplanes. So do you think Wall Street and the banks will help uh, Boeing out? So my guess is, yes, they will be able to go to the marketplace and raise the money. They also amended a, a credit agreement uh, yesterday with their banks. It didn't necessarily give them money, but they have the potential to draw down more debt. Boeing has to be a little bit careful here because their debt ratings, you know, from the big rating agencies, Moody's, S&P, they're under pressure to go below investment grade. You know, in, in investment grade world, you can raise money much cheaper. So they don't want to take that debt and draw down on it uh, and actually, you know, sort of bear debt. They'd rather take uh, equity stocks. Uh, and, I, and I, I suspect that the stock market will give them the money to, uh, you know, 10 or 15 billion to push through this uh, this union strike. So does that mean that Boeing is in this exclusive club 
of uh, corporations that are just simply too big to fail? So very interesting question, right? So Boeing is definitely a very important defense contractor for the U.S. And so, uh, and I would say that it's also the U.S. most important commercial aircraft manufacturer. And so I think the government has to be very careful about allowing Boeing to fail. I don't know that they would let Boeing fail, but I would point back to General Motors during the global financial crisis. That company did go through a bankruptcy, even though they were very critical to the U.S. economy. So I think there's a way to manage it. If if the problem got to be at a point where Boeing couldn't bear its debts, that they could push it through some sort of bankruptcy. But would it go away? No, I don't think so. And George, uh, lastly, most of uh, the major airlines around the world, including those in our region, Qantas, Singapore Airlines, Fiji Airways, all have Boeing jets in their fleets. I suppose what everyone wants to know is whether there's going to be flow-on impacts for these carriers, and ultimately, would that mean higher airfares for travellers? So I think that's what we're trying to figure out right now in this industry. So I think it depends how long this strike lasts. For sure, we've seen problems in supply chain for both Boeing and Airbus, which means deliveries aren't coming as fast as the airlines want. In the U.S., we're still seeing softening of fares, so it doesn't seem like there's not enough airplanes in the world that would raise uh, airfares. But if this strike drags on and you get more supply chain problems in the industry that affect other manufacturers like Airbus, we could be in that position. I'd say this is something we're going to look at closely into next year. Okay, George Ferguson, thanks very much for your expertise on this topic. Thanks very much. Enjoy it. Thank you.